Spice Rack, where you at? <laughs> What's up, y'all? It is such a beautiful day out here. Ooh, look at this light on your girl. Do you see her hair? Do you see her hair? This is my vacation here, y'all. I'm getting ready to go on vacation. And because I don't know the climate exactly of where I'm going, I'm not sure how my hair is going to be affected. So I said, let me go ahead and braid this up. But ain't she cute now? <laughs> she thinks she cute. I don't care what you say. She thinks she cute. Anywho. Um, so it is... Saturday and I am just getting back from seeing babe. This will be my last time seeing him for two weeks I'm so sad. We had a good time um, But I'm gonna go hang out with Nigel and Kristen and we're gonna get our bowl on I got a free pass So we're gonna go there do some bowling maybe drink some beer and have some snacks You know, I, you know anytime there's snacks. I'm in it for it. I'm all the way there So yeah, come kick it with us. Let's see what's going on. I'm gonna try to record while in there but I'm if I remember correctly, there's going to be music. So depending on how loud that is, I might not get to show y'all much, if anything at all. But that's the plan, okay? Chloe, you want to say hi? Did you say hi? Did you say hi? You just going to walk off on the people? They want you to say hi. Can you sit? Good girl. Smile. Say hi. Okay. You trying to play? You trying to play? You trying to play? Because as soon as I start playing with you, you're going to run scared. Her eyes are so yeah, intense. I got to tell y'all what happened to me. So, um, I was sitting in, or we, I pull up to the ha the hair place to get my hair braided. And there's this young lady sitting next to me. Obviously, she was waiting for them to open too. And we're both like shoving breakfast in our face. So, we see each other doing that. We kind of make eye, you know, eye contact and laugh or whatever. So, then... We go into the hair place and we sit down and um, I'm the lady had already started doing my hair. She the other gal was just kind of waiting for her girl to get there. And when the girl got there, she asked the young lady, she said, um, what's your name? And she said, oh, my name's Candace. So, of course, I was like, oh, your name's Candace. My name's Candace. And she's like, oh, I said, how do you spell it? C-A-N-D-A-C-E. Same way I do, which is very rare. Mostly, mostly people put the I in it. So then she was like, so then what's your middle name? And I said, Nicole. And she was like, shut up. My middle name is Nicole. And she spelled it the same way. And so we were named twins. We had the same name. I'm going to put her picture here because I said, girl, we got to take a picture. That never happens. Two black chicks with the same spelling and the first and the middle name never happens. It was really cool, though. She seemed like a nice girl. And she was on going on vacation, too. She was headed to Vegas. And then I told her where I was going, and she was like, oh, my God, have so much fun. So it's crazy how the world works like that, you know? I don't know. Of all the places, we end up at the same place, eating breakfast the same time, getting our braids done the same day. It was cool. So, you know, I originally started this vlog yesterday, and don't even judge me because I do have on the same outfit, um, because me and Kristen and Nigel were supposed to go bowling. So we meet up. And I go inside, they were, they hadn't got there yet. I got there before them. So we go in, I go inside to try to see like how long are we going to be waiting for bowling. The guy, when I walk in, I already knew like, oh God, this isn't looking good. Cause there was a line like all the way to the door and all these kids were everywhere and parents are everywhere. And it was just a regular old Saturday. So I was like, what is the big deal? I mean, bowling's fun, but I didn't know it was going to be that packed. Which I guess I should have, because when I did it for my brother's birthday, it was a little packed too, but still, not that packed. So, um, I go up to the guy and ask him how long. He said, oh, well, we're kind of sold out tonight, and the quickest we could get you in is about three and a half hour wait. For bowling? I said, oh my God. So, as I was walking out, the two of them, Nigel and Kristen, were walking in, and of course, I wasn't, I was so flustered, I wasn't even thinking about turning on my camera. So, we were like, okay, let's do plan B. We um, went to get food. We went to this little, um, this new restaurant because the other, I took them to one restaurant, which was Korean barbecue, which we all love that. But I don't know if it was because the sun was out, but everybody and their mom was in there and they said it was going to be an hour wait. And we're like, it's not that serious. So I took them around the corner to this new spot. It was a bulgogi restaurant and nobody was in there. So the first restaurant was stuffed, packed, and this one was completely empty. So I was kind of like, uh, 
I don't know. That's it's always kind of a red flag for me. But anyway, we went in there. We ate. We got bulgogi. We got some sushi rolls and a bunch of little sides and stuff that come with it. And it was good. We had a good time. We ate. We were there for probably like an hour and a half. But while we were there, we decided, okay, we're going to go see us a movie. Finally decided on the movie. We're going to go see us. And me and Kristen are not really into like horror, scary kind of movies. And I'm not, like I know it's not a, necessarily a gory movie. And I don't like those kind of movies either. But um, this one's more suspense. And so like, you know, it's more like a, huh, like that kind of stuff. And that makes me anxious too. So we were both kind of like, well, you know, it took us a long time to finally say, okay, we're going to stop being br like babies and do it. So we picked the theater and we looked to find the time. Well, we were sitting down to eat it. It was like seven and the next movie was at 8.30. And we're like, well, maybe we should pick a later one. So we go to the other theater and they have one at 8.50. So we're going, we're getting there to buy the tickets through Fandango. And then we try to find three seats and there weren't three seats together. So then we go back to the other theater to look at that seat. And they're all sold out for the 8, the 8.30, the 9.20 and the other one. Because, you know, I think it's the second weekend. So, you know, what we end up doing, we went to Sherry's and got dessert. We all we did yesterday was eat. We went, we had bagogi, and then we went to Sherry's and got pie. We each got three. We got a different pie each, so that we could all try each other's pies. Mine, I think, was the best. I got this cream pie with a Marion berry, like, not sauce, but it was good. Whatever it was, it was delicious. And then Kristen got the lemon sour cream pie. It was good. The crust could have been better, but it was good. And then. Um, Nigel got this s'mores pie, which it was just chocolatey, marshmallowy wee goodness. It, it it was good, but I feel like mine was the best. Like I honestly could go back and get another slice of that pie today. It was that good. I love cream cheese. I love like cheesecake stuff. So that's what we did. We stayed in Sherry's and we're just talking for hours. We didn't get home until I think I met up with them at six thirty, and then we. I, I dropped them back off at their car at close to 11 and we were just running our mouths the whole night But like I like that kind of thing, you know, like we're just good friends and we just catch up I see Kristen more often than I see Nigel, but when we all are together We just have so much to talk about. I mean and I like that we can talk about a, an array of topics It's not just like work. It's not just like the same thing So we bounce ideas off of each other and it's all good Anywho, so I am now going to meet some other friends of ours, me and Babe's friends. Um, Papa V, which he is one of our like long, long, long time friends. He's kind of adopted us as his kids. He was actually locked up with Pookie for uh, pretty much the whole time Pookie's been down, so 20 something years. And he was actually a three striker. So that means he was in there for, with life without parole. Now, the, originally, the three strikes rule was not set for people that, that had, like, nonviolent crimes. And all Papa V's crimes were um, drug-related. And so, he'd been, you know, in prison for a long time, but completely has re rehabilitated himself. And also just has been such a, an asset to a lot of guys that have been in there. And so, he went up for clemency about three years ago. And he won. And so, last year... He, at last, not last year, the Thanksgiving before last, I went and that was his first Thanksgiving home. And so him and his wife have really been supportive to me and babe and like give us advice and, you know, cause it's rare that we have somebody that's, that's getting out and that's doing right. Like they get out, they want to take care of their family. They're working hard. They're doing all that you're supposed to do. And so that we can kind of use them as a blueprint for us. So like if me and babe ever have issues, um, the two of us can kind of talk it over with them and they help us give just give us an, a better more adult perspective you know it's been really good like they're great so I'm gonna meet them for dinner I'm probably not gonna show them because they don't know that I do YouTube and they're both very private and kind of old school um, but then I'll catch up with you guys when I get back such a random vlog this is gonna be I'm so sorry it's been pieced together it did not go like it was planned but I wanted to get something to you guys tomorrow because I'm getting ready to go on my trip and I have so much going on this week and I didn't want to make y'all think I wasn't still thinking about y'all. So I will be back later to either round this off, close it out, whatever. I don't know what else is going in here, but y'all will see. Talk to you later, y'all. Hey, y'all. Excuse me while I finish my chicken. But I think when I talked to you guys last, I was just about to go to dinner with... um 
Mama Mo and Papa V. And I was explaining to you that V had been locked up with Babe for about 20 something years. And he was a three striker. And we had dinner because they both kind of have adopted us over the years and really have taken us under their wing. And like I said, Vernell got clemency and he's been home for almost almost two years. He's got a great job. He's helping. He works as a um, a dependency aid. Uh, not dependency aid. Basically, if you have a drug and alcohol problem, he's not the chemical he, chemical dependency coach or trainer. He's the one that's out there helping you find employment, apartments, jobs, cars. Like he helps you make sure that you can be successful. And he's really been a mentor to Babe for a long time. And um, recently we've had not things come up, but just some concerns. And it's been so nice to have them, the two of them, be a good example for us. Because over all the years that we've been doing this together, there have been, really, they're the only couple that is out and still together. There's been so many couples that break up right before they, the person gets out or they break up during the incarceration stint. And we don't have very many examples of what it looks like when the man is free and, and how it works after, you know? I've never been naive enough to think that all of a sudden we're going to be skipping down the street and holding hands and it's going to be sunny all t all the time and it's just going to be nothing but roses and rainbows. I've never thought that. And I knew that there'd be some things that I couldn't prepare for. But being able to talk to two people who are actually still going through it and have went through what we are, haven't even started yet has been so helpful and so eye-opening and just such a blessing. Like I feel so grateful that they're in our lives because I mean, we can talk to them about everything. Like, there's nothing that's off limits. And they're so open and honest with us and just so real about how this transition is going to go. And it gave me a whole new perspective on just, like, what's coming. And I'm not scared because, I mean, a lot of things that they said, she was honest. And both of them were honest and said that some days it would just be easier if he was back in. Because they operated within that so long that it's comfortable for both of them and things just make more sense and they're not as hard and it's easier in some aspects but they both decided that they there's no other option meaning that the two of them will work it out no matter what they're always going to be each other's person and they just got to figure it out together and I mean, me and babe have always said that like we are it like this is going to either work. if it don't work we both gonna be dead because that's the only way this is not gonna work for us you know and we we know that there's gonna be obstacles and there's things that are gonna come up that we have no way of preparing for but I'm glad that they're on our team and I'm glad that we have them to run things off of bounce things off of and that can give us a different perspective you know as much as I love Pookie and I know that man loves me to death. We have been doing this for over 22 years. And it'll be 23 when he finally comes home. It's a long time to do something. And while we do the time together, we do our lives separate. Do you know what I mean? Like we do the time together in a way. We do a lot of things together. But there's such so many things that we do separately. And I don't know. It's just nice to... Um, be able to talk to somebody who's doing it too that can kind of give us ideas on what we might need to be need to help us be successful because success is not an option we are going to be successful it just might take a little time to get there and, and success will look differently for us than it might for some other people but you know like I said I'm not scared they didn't deter me they didn't um like scare me off it was just nice to get that real conversation you know and I just love how God places people in your life that when I first met Mama Mo I can't say I didn't like her I just thought now who is this big mouth woman talking to everybody and telling everybody stuff like she was just one of those people that takes charge and she does not play and I didn't do my time like that I, I stayed in the side like I don't the less people that know me the better sorry there's a bug attacking me. Better not be in my brains either. No, that's not it. Okay, sorry. 
excuse me. But I never would have thought that we would be so close and like, we don't even see each other or talk often, but when we do, like, it's just all love and it's because we have been through this situation together. Like, it bonds you because you know exactly how the person's feeling. And it's crazy because some of the things they were talking about was like, that is ba me and babe already. We already be going through that. And it's just like, helps you feel like you're just not alone and that you're not going crazy and like this is part of the process and while I'm so excited for this part of the process to be here I'm also very cautious and I can't tell you that I'm not there's not some fear I mean that's I think absolutely normal and not fear because like I, I honestly do not have never thought that me and babe's problems would be him beating me or us him cheating I cheating like we're just not those people that's gonna be the last thing that breaks us up but you know Chloe what are you doing she's over there digging in holes and I'm gonna have to wash her and then she's gonna be mad cause she gotta get a bath okay you keep digging I'm gonna wash you tonight <sighs> she ain't listening to me Chloe get out of that making a mess so like I know what our that what our problems won't be but there's certain things that I, I could never have thought this would be like, oh, that could be an issue. Never thought about that because I've never done this before. So I don't know. Like I said, I just love how God places people in your life that he says, you know what? I think that you're going to need them. So I'm going to put them here for now. And then you can press play on them when the time is right. And I was able to push play today on my, my fam. And they really came through for your girl. And they will for your boy. I haven't talked to him yet. So I get to share all the good news and all the stuff we talked about. But... Can we talk about this lighting now? I mean, <laughs> she did get her hair done and it is about dust, but she looked good in the dust, right? <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> I don't know, I just like playing with it. You know when you get hair, you remember when you was a kid and you used to put that towel on your head and all of a sudden you'd be walking around like this to try to swing your hair? You remember, y'all did it. Whew, anywho. Y'all, this has been such a hodgepodge vlog. Vlog. It did not go like it was supposed to. But I think that's just another lesson. Life does not go according to plan. You make a plan, God laughs at it. So this was him laughing, and y'all got it. I, I hope y'all are still here. <laughs> but if you're not, you know you still my people. Spice Rack! You know I love you. If you ain't part of the Spice Rack, I don't know why not. Normally, we do have more fun here. Today might not be the best example, but still, join the Spice Rack for some vlogs, some fun, some stuff. We do stuff over here. Get on that. Everybody else, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Let everybody know what your girl is doing. Let them come check out this glow, okay? Let's look, let, come talk about it. Let's talk about it. Bye, y'all. <laughs>